Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot here for a board game vlog. And uh, last night I played a bunch of first plays of a few games, and um, people kept pinging me trying to get me to do opinions, and I didn't want to type them, so I'm just gonna vlog them. Uh, again, this is first playthrough, so maybe not my full opinion and my full um, endorsement, but uh, certainly I am usually pretty right on about how I'm gonna feel about a game after a play. So, uh, the one I'm really excited to show you is Stockpile from Novu Games. Um, this is a two to five player bidding game with a smidge of deduction. Um, it's a stock market game. It's called Stockpile. Um, it, it, deduction might be a little bit of a strong word, but you're trying to make choices based on some hidden information. So the way players are playing is going to influence how you play. Um, it's it's a really cool little game. I would say it's probably not going to play at that two player level. It, it it's most likely going to be four and five players. That's going to be very fun for it. Um, so the stockpile is oh, <laughs> me throwing around my living room. Uh, it's out now. You can buy it from their website. Um, they're doing a little bit of sales to stores. My stores happen to grab a couple of copies because it did very well at Dice Tower Con, that kind of turned me on to it. Um, so in the game, players are given uh, a, a, a stock that they know about and something that it's going to do at the, at the end of the round. So this, this stock would go up four spaces at the end of the round, but this is hidden from the rest of the table. Um, so the way that I play, having known that blue was going to go up four spaces, is going to influence what I'm bidding on and how I'm acting. Other people are going to have to try and figure out why I'm bidding so high on blue or changing blue or not selling blue or whatever it is based on my actions. Uh, and then everything's going to get revealed at the end of turn. So there's one card for each of the six stocks, and each of the stocks is going to have something done to it. So it's either going to pay out or rise or fall a little bit at the end of the round. Um, the way that you do that is that everyone is given two cards that either have a stock written on them or some sort of action to cause people to lose money or gain money or something similar. Um, we're going to go around in turn order and each player is going to play one card face down and one card face up on one of the piles. Once every player has an opportunity to do that, you will start bidding on a pile. So maybe I want to pay three for this one because I know that the blue stock is doing well. Players can outbid you by going up a level, so they go one, three, six, ten, whatever. Or they can just bid on a different one. If they outbid you, you take your meeple back, and when the turn comes back to you, you just rebid, and you can rebid on the same thing or a different thing. Once all of the bids are through and no one else is fighting, um, you pick up your stacks, you activate any of those uh, powers, the, the action cards in turn order, and then um, you add the stocks to your portfolio, your stock portfolio. Um, after that, you have an opportunity to sell any stock that you, if, if you'd care to unload it. And then all of those adjustments are going to happen. So all the things you knew about at the beginning of the round are going to happen. Um, and that can cause stocks to double, called splitting. Or they can go bust and you have to discard them all. Or they can just move up or down a little bit. Um, that part of the game is super fun. Uh, if you have an opportunity to try this game, I am... No holds barred recommending it. It's a very solid 7 out of 10, really good game, especially I would say this is going to meet either families who game a lot or gamers who need something light and fun for the end or the beginning of a night. Um, there's a couple reasons I'm not going to say this won't work necessarily as a gateway game, and I think it's mostly just um, because it's kind of a newer effort for them. Uh, I think there were things they could have done to make this a little more intuitive for new gamers. But uh, with an experienced gamer at the table, I could teach this to anyone. But from the box, I think it's going to be a little harder to get new players into it. Um, so the first thing I'll talk about, and I, I mentioned this on Twitter, and I apologize, Novu, but the, the component quality um, is not good. This is a glassy-type card. Um, it shows fingerprints. It's going to get ruined really easily. This is the same type of component issue I have with r, &R games, where um, it just feels um, uh, not cheap. I know that they pay enough for this, and it doesn't have to be, nothing has to be linen finished all the time, but these are definitely the kind of cards that show wear and tear fastest of any. Um, so 
I didn't care for that. I didn't care for the turn order tracker. See that? This is your player board, and it holds your stocks, and it holds the cards on top of this, so you um, have to see your turn order track, and it goes from the bottom to the top of the card. Um, so that is not my favorite thing. There was probably an easier way to remind players of the turn order um, because it's important you sell before you adjust and you do it, it, the the turns make sense when you think about it but in the game it's not necessarily intuitive um, the other problem I have with the game is the MSRP uh, for 50 bucks I better be getting top quality components I'd be 50 to 70 dollars is my range of game prices in general and uh, for 50 bucks I, I want a game that's going to last and be really nice and have lots of stuff in it. And I think their $50 came out of a small print run or something similar. I'm not sure. And the last thing I'll say, and this is their bad for just not asking a gamer, because this is pre-punched. This was in the box before I opened it. Um, that is a pre-punched counter that you use to track your days and these are pre-punched counters for each of the stocks. Um, my solution for this is going to be putting clear glass beads into the box to use as trackers but this this is just not necessary. You printed this and it, it wasn't necessary because the player pieces are just regular meeples so regular cubes I mean that, that would have been just fine by me or glass counters or anything else. Um, also, vacuum pack trays. I, I'm just going to say it. Don't do vacuum pack trays. Just give me baggies and a smaller box. Um, but they needed to charge $50, so they made it the $50 size because that's our market this day. <laughs> um, other than that, what's really cool about the game, and this is why I would say it's not necessarily for beginners, and I know I'm already at seven minutes. Eesh. Um, Instead of playing just the basic game, each player can take a unique character, and also, oh, I'm going to run off camera one second. You can take unique characters at the beginning of the game that give you a special ability, and you can also play on the more interesting side of the board. Boop, boop. Now, this side of the board has a unique amount of spaces for the stock to go up and down. So once it busts here, um, you have to discard all your stocks of that color, and then the stock will return to the darkened space. And once you get up to the top where that dollar symbol is, all of your stocks double in value or start paying you out a ton of money. And then they reset to the stop sign shape piece. Um, and so being on this side of the board, those values are very different. Like a, a purple stock in this side of the board is very stable. Blue is a little more uh, crazy, but it pays out more often. Whereas the regular side of the board is all the same. Very long stocks, you're not going to have a lot of booms or busts. Um, so I would highly recommend the unique character cards and this side of the board. Okay, that's probably enough on Stockpile. Try it if you can. Um, it's very cool. It's available through their site right now, and they're also selling to stores. So my store has it in Seattle if you're around. Um, the other two games we played last night, Perfume and Lords of Scotland. And what I'll say about Perfume, it's from Queen Games. Unless you really want a luck-heavy dice roller, which is sort of a dice roller, um, I, you can skip it. Uh, you get a number of actions per turn, which you're choosing, which is kind of clever. Um, so if I want to go first, I have to take the fewest actions. If I go last, I get a ton of actions. Um, I can pick up dice. I can pick up water tokens, which are sort of victory points if you have them all the way at the end, but you're mostly going to use them to re-roll dice, and you're going to roll the dice to get flavor notes, take those flavor notes, turn them into perfume, and sell that perfume to a customer. The customers that come out, the perfume notes, and the dice are all super friggin' random. Um, so the game, it's not worth the time or the effort or the money. I, I would just say skip it. If you if you really want something light and pretty, that's the way to go, but it's not worth it. Um, and the last but not least, ooh, where'd it go? My Scotland, guys. Oh, there they are. So, Lords of Scotland, this is a reprint from Z-Man Games of an older game. Um, it's similar to Three Dragon Ante, which is the D&D &D card game. Uh, in Lords of Scotland, you control uh, clans that are skirmishing over stuff and things. I have no idea why or how, but that's because of me. Um, so you have cards here. You'll have cards in hand, and each round you can either pick up a new card or you can play a card down. 
Um, if you play a card, you can play it face up or face down. If it's face up and there's no other card that's lower than that card, so this one, there's no other three on the board, then you can activate the power, which are unique to the different clans. Um, there are two modes for this game, and I ended up playing a three and a four player back to back. At three players, when you play a card face up, it looks at all the cards of all the clans, and if there's something lower, it doesn't activate. And in four players, it looks at only cards of the same clan. If there's a card lower, it doesn't activate any other cards out, it doesn't matter. So at three, the game was a little too long and a little too restrictive, because if the first thing I throw in a three-player game is a one on the table, there's not going to be a lot of player powers going on. So it's mostly just going to be playing cards and adding up points at the end. Um, in four players, almost every card you play activates. So um, it's a lot wilder and swingier. And um, there's not a lot you can do to plan your turns until maybe the person right before you goes. So my hope is that playing more four-player games gives me better idea for strategies that we didn't quite see last night. Um, you get to double your army's strength score for the round if you have all the same clan um, down in your in your revealed cards. Uh, but my, my feel is that it's going to be one of those games that I'll play at cons and stuff like that with uh, other gamers that like it. Uh, but with my regular group, they're not gonna they're not gonna play it with me that often. I'll play a few more times and try and get them to come aboard. But the three player is pretty unsatisfying, and the four player is a little wackadoodle. So maybe maybe it gets better over time, maybe not. But so far, it it's middling. So stockpile, yes. Perfume, no. And Lords of Scotland is kind of up for debate. Uh, that's all for me for now, and I will see you guys later. <laughs>